Welcome to Fun Lettering with me. So I'm going to just share with you how I do some of my quotes that I like to use in my journals. Um, I'm going to just give you an idea of different pens I use. I'm just going to use these little strips. So you get a brush pen that has like a brush point, which is pretty fun to use. Um, most of the time, if you do cursive writing, that's kind of the lettering I'm doing. It's like modern cursive, like it's even not the fancy, fancy calligraphy. It's just like, like cursive with a flare. Um, if you don't it a little bit, you kind of get that nice little idea. So using this brush pen makes, uh, makes it just a little easier to get the thicker strokes that goes down and the skinny strokes that go up. So I'm just going to start by pressing down, not so hard, go up, press down, come up a little bit lighter, press down, lighter, and then press down, and then press down, press down, press down, and press down. And that's kind of an easy way to do your fancy lettering. Now, if you look at this, you will see that they are basically all in the same line. If you want to do the, I think it's called bouncing or something where it's not the same. To me, it's a little bit easier if you do it with a pen. I also, I like this way where it's like so clean and so pretty, but I also like the sketchy way a bit more. So, where I would do the same idea, I would just first write it out. Right? So just like your, your normal um, like cursive. And then I will make everything just a little bit thicker where it goes down. And I would just color in those open spaces. So just go. It's very similar look, but however, now you can kind of go and dip down a little bit and just fill it in. And you can make this a little bit thicker. So you have a little bit more, more control on how you want it to do if you use a pen. I also like to, if for example, have the two owls next to each other, try to sort of more or less kind of let them feel the same, but it's not always possible. Make thicker. So every time your hand goes down, thicker. And if I can just show you, I like the pencil lines I like both but this always goes really well with my art in inside my journal and then of course because watercolor right you can also do the same idea with the normal paintbrush I don't go super skinny it's still it's like I always like to say it's like half my pinky nail, that's kind of the size I always use. It needs to have a nice point. Get your mixing, whatever color you want to do. And I like to hold my brush close to the top, a little bit more control. Make sure you do not have a drop of water on your point. So maybe have your towel ready so you can just see if you can dip it a little bit. And then the same idea. So don't press hard, press hard. Don't press hard, press hard. And so, press hard. I should make it a little darker. Hold on. And then, what if you come here and you want to just get more paint? When you, oh, now it's a little thicker. It's okay. Um, we just make it a bit darker so you guys can see easier. What if you get 
here and you kind of want to change color. So maybe a little bit more teal. I would just blend it in as I paint. And then because you can be fancy, you can splatter. Imagine how cute would it be if you write somebody's name and then um, you do this. Adorable. Okay. In your workspace. Okay. So that's just the different ones. You get the brush pen, the normal pen, or your actual Foriosis brush. So you decide which one you want to use. I'm just going to put this away. Then I'm going to show you how to do the, how I do if I wanted to do a quote. So, oh, now you cannot see. So already I did, I wrote down amidst the chaos, find small pockets of silence that Christine was so kind to give us the suggestion. And then you want to count out every word. So it's like six, three, five, four, five, seven, two, seven. So you want to make sure that you count how many letters are in every one. Okay. That is very needed for the next step. Okay. So I don't know why you cannot see it. How can you not see it? It's so weird. I'm just using little um, index cards that I bought for one that was blank. So he looked at me like, am I crazy to give this to him? I didn't see you get blank index card. So that's what happened. Okay, so now I want to divide it in. Uh, I'm going to do like a rectangle because it's a pretty long quote. And I'm going to do it a rectangle. Most of the times, especially if I do quotes in my journals, my books are portrait size. So I it does end up being like this in any case. Now I want to create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces where I'm going to put my words. So I have this line already. And then I'm going to divide, maybe I'm going to do like a little rainbow shape here. And for admit, a mist is long, so I can fold that first. There is a little smaller. So maybe I just want to do this. Before we continue, you also want to divide it in half. Forgot about that. So divide it in half. So make sure that you kind of stay in the middle. Chaos, I may want to do in a ribbon. I'm going to draw a little ribbon. It kind of looks a little bit cute if you go outside of the line. So your letters can stay inside. Your rest of your quote can be inside, but then your, you know, the ribbon goes a little bit outside of the lines. I just want to show that it's got, it's 3D, it kind of goes around. Then I'm also going to do a guideline here and here. So I do these lines so I can make sure that I, I write top to bottom. So I can make sure that the, I fill the whole space. So my letters are the same size. Find is a small word. So even though I try to stay everything in the middle, you can definitely do a few. Um, I think I'm going to use this shape that's already here to put find in. So you can kind of, you know, you don't, everything doesn't have to be in the middle. Then I'm going to go side to side for small. I'm going to do another one for pockets. Pockets can be a little bit more like skinnier. Off is another small word. So I can 
I probably just want to do the same as this. I'm just going to do here, like small. And then I think silence, because I kind of like the curve. Silence will curve like this. And I try to make it the same. So don't curve down too much. So the same. Okay, and that is kind of my out my layout for my words. I'm still going to stay using my pencil. If you press too hard with a mechanical pencil, definitely switch to just a normal pencil because you need to erase most of this. So switch to a different one if um, you know you press too hard because you don't really want to see any of your pencil lines. Okay, so this is your first, this is like your template, your little layout you made. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we stay in the middle. So we may even have to start our words in the middle to make sure we have enough space so it doesn't end like here or it looks a little bit squished in like fat lit, like so we have to plan a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the I and the D. And I go, see how I go to the top and the bottom, even though you cannot see because it's pencil and pencil. So I'm going to do the I and the D. And then I'm going to fall in the S. Touching the bottom, touching the top. I'm going to do the T. I'm going to do the same for the M. And then... Ah, why do I do an A? Never mind. A. I have it like smooth. Okay. Do a little line. So amidst such a weird in and, and sometimes the weird like gets words gets a little bit weird if you say it the whole time. Like amidst sounds really weird to me now. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. I'm gonna do the the in normal cursive because I think that would look cutesy here. I'm just going to do there, and then I am going to do chaos. So the A is going to be in the middle, and I'm going to do a little crazy white, like that. Kind of looks like an N, but I think you will be able to see it's an H. Maybe I can bring that down a little bit. You do want to use your pencil so light that you can only, only you should see it. I'm a little harder just so you can follow along. I'm going to do find just in normal. Is it uppercase or capitals? I'm going to go for uppercase. Small, I want to do. I'm going to do a different kind of A. And then I, when I do the M, I kind of just do those letters first to first see if I like how wide it is. And then another thing you can kind of work with is if you let the S, the M, the A, and if there was E, if they kind of all stay in the same line. It just looks a little bit neater if you sometimes do things that way. Okay, and then I'm going to do pockets over here. Again, I think I'm going to do the cursive way. So I'm going to dip down a lot. And I'm just going to write. This one I did not plan out. And then I hope it works. Luckily, it did. Maybe there's like a little tail um i'm just going to do off the o on the one side the f on the other side and then silence one two three four five six seven so one two three four so the e is going to be in the middle so i'm just going to do top to bottom e I'm going to do, maybe I'm going to do them at the bottom like this. So I'm going to have a long and then 
E like this and at the bottom. And then L and I. And because the P is right there, I'm not going to make the I with little lines. And then I have my outline. Okay. I'm taking my Sharpie. I'm going to show you guys with a Sharpie because I think it will just be easier to see, especially the, the size. It's like the size of my hand. Um, the pens can be a little bit thick. And then you may run into a problem where you cannot really read your there. So for purposes of just the thickness, I'm just going to use my Sharpie. Okay, so now I first just write. Again, trying to make sure that, so now you can do a few corrections as you go and you want to make your, um, make sure your lines are, you know, aligned. Let's see. And so now it makes a nice little rainbow shape. Then my ribbon. And do this. Maybe I'm going to just push it down a little bit to the bottom. So it more looks like an H instead of an in nice and fat ones chaos is kind of big and then i'm just going to do fine come on So because you have the pencil outlines, it's kind of a little easier for you. You know, the, you can make it, if you see it's a little too skinny or whatever, you can easily fix it. Pencil is just a guideline. Okay, so this is my outline, just like that. So if you use a Sharpie pen, the skinny one like this, you are safe to immediately erase your pencil lines. So I didn't do any coloring in. I didn't do anything. Oh, I, I always like mess up the paper when I erase. Okay, so doing this. I like to use the white eraser. This one's all so bad, don't do it. You're just gonna smudge it. I try to get rid of the paper, the pencil or eraser things. Okay, well, mind my little look at thing. And then what I wanna do is I am going to do my pen here. So it looks like my ribbon is folded over. Just kind of sort of ugly color it in. I also are going to double and even triple outline everything. I like on purpose go off the um off the line so I can see quite a few and it just helps me to not try to be so perfect because sometimes if you just want to be so perfect then it's not perfect and then you can see it. I'm going to double some of these lines too. And just make it all Thank you. 
I keep it a little bit thicker. And it just kind of looks like this. It's not perfect. It kind of looks cool. I love it like this. This one, I'm also just going to make a little thicker. So I almost want to say not all lettering needs to be cursive. I do a, uh, I like to combine them. So you don't always have to use all, just all the cursive all the time. Make this. If your lines were a little crooked, this is also a very easy way to just kind of, um, you know, you can just straighten it up. There's the same rule. If it goes down, it goes bigger. If it goes up, it's skinnier. So color in kind of with the part that just comes down. Don't forget the top of the loop. Let's see. And okay. At the bottoms where you see that's where you can kind of color in a little bit more towards, you know, down. So you don't have everything on the same line. So maybe even I want to push my O a little bit out. I can just make this a little bit thicker at the bottom. And then you can play with different, like the T. So before I color in the T, see how I kind of dip down a lot and then it's not the same as the E. And this is just another way to make it interesting, especially if you don't have a steady hand you do this thing. Okay. Off, I think I can just make it doubled and I'm going to double this one too. Or maybe this is more like three times. On purpose, I would go a little off. Then I want to see if I can maybe make like a little flowery, floral thingy at the bottom. So I'm going to do a little line like this and a little line like this. And I'm going to let them kind of cross in the middle. The middle is by the E. So I'm going to more or less let them cross. And then I make my line. And when I get to the top, I make little hearts you may have to turn yours like this so you can make it upright versus trying to do this i find that sometimes then the bottom ones look a little bit sad because your hand is not so so maybe maybe turn it maybe try and see what works better for you and then i'm just going to make little hearts and they, again, nothing has to be perfect. They just look like this. Do you see what I mean when I say little hearts? They work really well. I can double sketchy a little bit more over it if I made it so specific. And then I have my little Quote. I sometimes forget what I wanted to say. And this, oops, there's my quote. 